اللي بيفخر واللي بيقتل المدنيين مجرم Good afternoon, it is Saturday, March the 1st. I'm Nur Hail, and these are today's headlines. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon hails the formation of a new Lebanese government, hoping it will meet its constitutional deadlines. A mentally ill Gazan woman is shot dead by Israeli troops near the border. And in Ukraine, dozens are hurt in a pro-Russia protest in Kharkiv after the Prime Minister of Crimea appeals for help from Moscow. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has hailed the formation of a new Lebanese government, hoping it will pave the way for Lebanon to meet its constitutional deadlines. He hoped that Lebanon will hold the presidential and parliamentary elections on time, as well as respect the Babda Declaration. He made his remarks during his latest report on the implementation of UN Security Council Resolution 1701. He noted that Lebanon is still being negatively affected by the war in Syria, condemning the shelling and gunfire targeting the Lebanese-Syrian border. Meanwhile, Future Movement Secretary General Ahmed Hadiri said rising Sunni Shiite tensions and the deteriorating security in Lebanon are behind his decision to take part in a new government with the aim of safeguarding the country. The country. Two centers for filling gas canisters in Beirut's southern suburbs have been ordered to shut down. Interior Minister Nuhad al-Mashnu said that information has been uncovered that suicide attacks are being planned against gas centre in Uzahi and Bir Hassan. And this comes as the Lebanese army and the internal security forces are on a mission to hunt down a group of four veiled women wearing explosive belts and who are tasked by Lebanese Sheikh Sirajuddin Zureikat of the Abdullah Azam Brigades to carry out suicide terrorist attacks. According to a Safir newspaper, the women who were able to leave the Syrian area of Yabrud and head to the northern Bekaa are said to be of Iraqi and Lebanese nationalities. Reports say they are tasked to execute suicide attacks in religious places of a specific sectarian orientation. <laughs> A mentally ill Gazan woman was shot dead by Israeli troops in an area near the border that Israel has declared a no-go zone for Palestinians. Reports say she was hit by several bullets and that her body could not immediately be recovered because of continued Israeli fire. The Israeli military says troops had fired warning shots when several people failed to heed instructions to keep back from the security fence. The shooting comes the day after an Israeli aircraft hit a suspected rocket launch site in the north of the Gaza Strip. On to Pakistan now, where a bomb attack on a polio vaccination team in the northwest of the country has killed at least 11 people. Officials say the roadside bomb went off as the police-guarded convoy drove through a village in Khibir, a Pakhtunkhwa province near the Afghan border. The attack is the latest in a series targeting polio teams in the country. No group has claimed responsibility, but the Taliban oppose the polio schemes, which they see as a cover for international espionage. Initial reports said the convoy was struck by two separate bombs, and the blasts were followed by a fierce gun battle between security forces and the militants. And in Ukraine, dozens were hurt when the pro-Russia protest in the eastern city of Kharkiv turned violent, with demonstrators trying to storm the local government building. Some 20,000 joined the protest against Kiev's new pro-West government and later around 300 launched the assault on the government building. Stones and stun grenades were thrown, though it's unclear by whom. This comes after Ukraine's new prime minister, Arseniy Yatsenyuk, demanded that Russian troops withdraw immediately from Crimea, while pro-Russian prime minister Sergei Aksenov claimed control of all security services and appealed to Russia's president for help in keeping peace there. Coming up next, it's our inspirational woman of the week, Mael Khalil, founder of the Beirut Marathon Association. Stay with us. Welcome back. Inspirational Women series is about highlighting the achievements of women in Lebanon who are making an impact in their respective field. Yumna, on to you. You know her. 
Yes, we're continuing with our women series today, and this week's inspirational woman is none other than the Beirut Marathon Association founder, May El Khalil. Now, the first Beirut Marathon happened back in 2003, where 3,000 runners participated, and in November of last year, 36,000 people ran, reaching the largest number of runners in the Beirut Marathon. Thank you for being here, Ms. El Khalil. Thank you for inviting me. I want to start with, why, why running? Why running? Running is a way of life. It's about passion. It's about sharing, uh, uh, you know, while running, sharing your dreams with other people. It is change, and definitely it has the power of uh, changing societies. This might sound a bit uh, weird, what I'm saying, but I believe in the power of sports. I believe that uh, sports can change the world, in particular running. Uh, can change um, societies. And if, if, let's say, I look at the formula of the Beirut Marathon, when we started back in 2003 and mm -hmm. where we are right now, we see that uh, Lebanon as a country has been uh, once destroyed by a long and devastating civil war. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, uh, division between politics and, and religion, and we, I mean, even the government is, is constantly you know, uh, divided or, or unstable. So all these things uh, have been very much part of, of our culture. Here, co here comes the power of sports and the power of the Beirut Marathon, where, you know, for one day a year, we find people really, truly united, and that's when the Beirut Marathon uh, takes place. If, if, I'm, if I would take you as well back, you know, during the, the uh, days of war in Lebanon, the word running, used to mean running from, running from invasions, running from shells, running from war, while today it means running towards, towards peace, towards hope, and towards a better tomorrow. We're showing pictures on, uh, on the television right now, the screen, basically. You were involved in a tragic accident, I don't know if many people know this, back in 2001. Uh, you were running and you got hit by a bus, and you had to undergo 36 surgeries and after which doctor told you you would never be able to run again when doctors are telling you you will never going to be able to run again what goes through your mind well definitely um, uh, at the beginning I had you know the denial I went through the denial stage I am a human being uh, from being a, a runner and a long distance runner overnight I realized that I you know I was no longer the same person I used to be but at that time, even during my most vulnerable condition, I had a choice. I could turn problems into, into opportunities, or I could live all my life, you know, just, you know, uh, asking why and why me, and make my life and the life of the people around me miserable. So you chose not to be a victim, is well, what you're saying? Definitely, you mm. know, we, I, I believe any time we face a trauma, we are the decision makers. It's how to make the best out of it, how to turn problems into opportunities. Yumna, I believe that there is the inner strength inside each one of us. We, you know, usually we're not aware of these, of these qualities, but it's only when we face problems, we find it there. And, you know, if, if it's there, all what you need to do is just pick it up and have control over your mind because the mind has the power as well to take you in different directions. So the minute you're in control of your mind, this is it, you can deal with it. This is the key is what you're saying. Were you ever afraid about how people were going to perceive you? Maybe as a victim, this is, how, this is what happened to her, how, and think to yourself, okay, I need to take control. But did, were you ever afraid this is how it's gonna be for me? I think it's up to us how to portray, um, you know, these reactions. The minute people look at you as you are in full control, uh, people look at you in a different way. The minute the accident happened, I, you know, immediately realized that if I pity myself, I would lose the credibility of all the people around me. So uh, this came along with the support of my husband, my family, and the society. So it was a complete package. Uh, if, if you want to let go, you know, uh, people next to you might support you for a while, but then afterwards they will run away from you. But when they see that, you know, you are giving them this positive energy, you are giving them mm -hmm. hope, mm -hmm. you know, it, uh, I, I believe as well in this positive aura, I believe uh, that positive uh, reactions becomes like a snowball, 
you know, it brings more positive energy and then, you know, it becomes really something, something wonderful. I, I want to take this opportunity to say I completely agree. And I think this is probably the reason why you are, among many reasons, an inspirational woman for us. If somebody is going through, and this is interesting because you mentioned it, there are people who lose control. There are people who are unable to stay positive when it's so hard. So you, having gone through a very hard challenge, what is your advice for women going through these things? Because not everybody can take control. Do you think it's a gift? Do you think it's an ability that you have to, a skill that you have to work on? I think it's a combination. I remember back then when I was um, at the hospital, Eve, and even during my most, at, at my most vulnerable uh, uh, stage, um, lots of people came to the hospital, they knocked at my door, and they came to share their stories. And I shared my story, and it's, so it was honesty and transparency that brought us together. Mm -hmm. When I looked up at these people, you know, uh, uh, I, I felt the responsibility as well to be as strong as they were and now I am ready to give support to whoever feels that they need support so we need each other we need to support each other uh, we cannot do it on our uh, we cannot do it on our own as I said we are human being so I think the support system to start with is important but it's up to you if, if, if you don't want really to take that step forward you know, even, even, you know, the thousands of people who come to support you, if the mind and is not ready, uh, I don't think, you know, uh, people can, can really uh, move forward. You started also the 10K or 5K race for women empowerment last year. Congratulations on that. Thank what, you. Why, why a women's race? Well, you know, sports, it's about uh, uh, running for causes. And mm -hmm. this is what's really happening now. And I'm, I'm very proud to see that the, plat the Beirut Marathon is becoming a platform for the different NGOs, for the volunteers, for people to run for the causes that they believe in. And the uh, and women and women's empowered empowerment is as well a cause that is dear to my heart and to the hearts of, of many people. So through this vehicle or through this uh, energy, uh, um, you know, that we find through, through these mm -hmm. events, we decided at the Beirut Marathon to focus on the on women's empowerment, on the different issues that women really deal with. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, it was a great success. We had over 4,000 women, uh, uh, including the first, ra uh, including the first, first lady. lady. And these women, you know, they ran, uh, some of them ran just to run, others ran for the causes they believe in. We even had moms and, and, and babies. So the, the positive energy that was there was really incredible. And at the same time, you know, it becomes a call for action. A call, here, I'm going to quote you and interrupt you on that one. A call for action. You were talking about the challenges that women face. What do you think is the biggest challenge that women are facing in Lebanon today? Uh, I would say many. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot list them because okay. uh, you can't think of one uh, specific uh, Well, one definitely or? you have uh, uh, citizenship, you have the uh, violence that mm. is still, you know, I think now it's becoming all over the news, it's becoming a big, uh, a big issue. Um, uh, even women, you know, not, not seeing women running for parliament or municipalities or, so there are different, different issues. Women in sports as well. We would like to empower these women and you know, I give the credit to the uh, different NGOs. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, they've been around and they've been rallying for these causes. The Beirut Marathon is a sports organization, but because we believe in this cause, we are telling all these NGOs, come and use this platform and, and voice over your, your uh, uh, shout loud. But the most important thing for us women is to be aware that we cannot run backwards we have to run forwards when is the 10k race this year uh it's on the 4th of may 4th of may okay me and noor actually who i'm going to give the uh the platform back to ran it last year we're going to be running it this year hopefully too noor yes absolutely. thank you so much for joining us today that was miss mail khalil the beirut marathon association founder back to you noor thank you Thank you, Yumna, and thank you to your guest, a very inspirational woman indeed. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of your top stories. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon hails the formation of a new Lebanese government, hoping it will meet constitutional deadlines.
A mentally ill Gazan woman is shot dead by Israeli troops near the border. And in Ukraine, dozens are hurt in a pro-Russia protest in Kharkiv after the Prime Minister of Crimea appeals for help from Moscow. Thank you for watching Future TV. Join us again tomorrow at the same time for your latest news from Lebanon and the world.